I do welcome you here this morning. It's always good to gather together for worship, and so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I do want to especially welcome our guest and let you know we have a little slip here in the bulletin. We'd love for you to fill that out and drop it in the offering plate. And uh, just a couple announcements and uh, continue on in our worship service. Uh, I just want to point out on Tuesday, not only do we have our women's and men's Bible studies, but we also have a sing-along at the nursing home. Now, those two are real close together, but I think that it's possible to, uh, to even uh, do both if you uh, go to the sing-along at the nursing home and then come immediately to the um, studies at 6.30. So the nursing home sings at 6 o'clock, and so uh, we would uh, uh, love to see anybody there that can make it. Uh, also, we have the home our home fellowship is coming up next Sunday. And uh, that's going to be at the Gottman's house. And so uh, uh, looking forward to that. And if, if you uh, are able to help with food or anything or want to help with food, just get with uh, Donna and uh, she can kind of let you know what items she might need. Okay. Any other announcements that I might be missing? All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our Baptist faith message reading. So. Uh, last week, our reading was on God and uh, talked about the nature of God and the Trinity. And so for these next few weeks, uh, we'll hit uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to talk about the, the three persons of the Trinity. And so let's read this together. God as Father reigns with a providential care over his universe, his creatures, and the flow of the stream of human history according to the purposes of his grace. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, and all-wise. God is Father in truth to those who become children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. He is fatherly in attitude toward all men. All right. We're going to have a time of prayer request. So come on up, Roger, and share those with us. First of all, I want to welcome everybody here, any guests, all just glad you made it and brave to cold to get here. Uh, we have a list out there for, as soon as you come in the front doors for any possible prayer requests that you guys would like to have mentioned during the next Sunday's uh, service. Uh, the ones that we have this week is Millie Muncy, uh, Greg's sister, she has cancer and has been placed on hospice. Uh, the family of Nina Davis, Julie McEwen, I believe it's Gordon Dulcy, and uh, continue to uh, keep Jan Thompson in your prayers. All right, well, we're going to take a time now with a silent prayer to lift up these requests and any other requests that we might have. Uh, it's also a time for us to prepare our hearts for worship. So would you bow your heads with me? And let's, uh, let's pray silently to the Lord. trust you with them this morning. Uh, we trust that, that you are good, uh, that you have the power to do anything and, and everything, uh, but that you work all things according to your will, for your glory, for our good. And so uh, we cling to that this morning. And we pray, Lord, that uh, as we do, as we, as we entrust you with our burdens and 
uh, our anxieties, Lord, we pray that we would be able to maybe turn our mind away from those things and to, uh, to see your beauty, to see your glory this morning, to behold it and to, uh, to be changed by it. So I pray that uh, you would work on us uh, by your word, by your spirit, as we sing, as we pray, as we look to your word in, in Exodus this morning, and we uh, we pray, Lord, also that you will be honored by our worship, that your name will be lifted high, not just uh, with our lips, but in our hearts. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Um, before I do our call to worship, uh, I normally don't do this, but I, I feel like I need to say something real quick. Uh, well, kind of two things. Uh, one thing is I want to I want to thank you all uh, so much. Uh, last week at my ordination, that was a very uh, encouraging opportunity for me, a very humbling experience for me, and just a huge blessing from you all as a church body. But I also want to say one more thing. Um, I realized that last week at my ordination, I made a horrible, horrible mistake. And uh, I, I realized that somehow, I don't know if I was just super nervous, if I had a lot on my mind, or just a combination of everything, and somehow I forgot to mention my wife in my closing, my closing uh, remarks. And so I just wanted to take a second and say thank you, Rhea, and I want to I wanna tell you all that uh, she is the most godly woman that I know, and there is there's literally no one else on this earth who has impacted me more personally for Christ and who's been such a great influence on my life. So I just, I wanted to try and right my wrong a little bit and say thank you to her and just let you all know that I'm so happy for you all to be able to get to know her and to be able to serve with her and be served by her and serve her and everything. And that's just going to be such a wonderful thing. But uh, moving from that, I just want to, want to say that I, I it broke my heart when I realized that. Um, but uh, I'm going to ask her actually to go ahead and come on. She is going to help me lead. Uh, sir, I thought she might be awkward while she was up here on the stage while I was saying that, but uh, but we're gonna we're gonna lead you in worship this morning, um, and as we as we get ready to sing this first song, I just want to read a few verses from First Peter chapter one verses three through five. It says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you." who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And with that in mind, with our, our living hope in mind, would you stand with me and let's worship together this morning. Amen. Jesus. 
Slain by death, the God of life. But no grief to hear his praise. Praise the Lord, he is alive. service and that your Holy Spirit will just speak through Chad as he brings the message. Thank you for everybody that's here and pray that you'll bless us when we leave this place. In your name we pray. Amen. stand again as we continue to worship the Lord this morning.
Oh, 
teaching prop, but uh, I guess this will do. Rhea says that she's asleep, so uh, so that we'll, we'll have to we'll have to do with this this morning. But um, so so we talked this morning in our reading about God the Father. Okay, so so I want to I want to kind of maybe help us understand this a little bit. Obviously, it's God. He's huge. He's infinite. So it's hard to understand him fully, but we can understand a little bit. So. Let's just pretend this is Sela, okay? Can we pretend this is this is Sela? Um, so, what ways do you think? I'm I'm her father. So, what ways do you think, as an earthly father, do I take care of Sela? How do I take care of her? What do I do for her? Or what does any parent usually do for their kids? You all have parents, I presume. <laughs> what do they What do they do for you? <laughs> Feed her, okay? So, so I provide her with her food, right? Okay. What else? What else do I do? Is that all I do? I feed her, <laughs> sit her in the middle of the floor, give her some food every once in a while, and she's good. Get her clothes, all right? So I clothe her, right? We have to, we have to make sure she has clothes, and especially on days like today when it's super cold, we need to make sure she's warm enough. She, she likes to kick her socks off, as many people know, so we have to make sure her feet stay plenty warm. Uh, what else? What else do I or any, any parent uh, do to take care of their, their kids? Water, okay, good. So you and water, right? So if Sayla loves water, she loves to drink water. If you watch her drink water, it's like the best thing on earth to her. So yeah, all those things. Anything else you guys can think of? So I feed her, I clothe her, and I water her. That sounds like a, sounds like a pretty good deal. So so in other words, I take care of her basic necessities, right? Rhea and I, as her mother and father, we take care of her basic necessities. We we give her what she needs to be healthy. You know, if she needs medicine, like let's say if she gets sick, we give her medicine to, to help her get better. We'll take her to the doctor. Uh, we give her clothes. We try to give her little toys and things to, to play with so she stays occupied. Do you have another thing? She, she Well... She, yeah, she can eat some chicken noodle soup, maybe. That, that, that might, might happen. We haven't tried that yet. That's a good idea, though. Um, so anyway, uh, so I, we, do, we do that as her earthly parents to try to take care of her. Okay, But in a lot of the same ways, only on a much, much bigger scale, 
um, God does the same thing for us as his children. So, so when we have a relationship with God through Jesus, you know, we've talked about that several times up here. When we put our faith in Jesus and we have a relationship with God, then that means that God is our father. That's pretty, pretty crazy, right? So we have earthly parents, but we also have a heavenly father who takes care of all of our needs. And so here's the, the cool thing. If your parents give you food or give you clothes that it first came from God because he's the one who created and provides all the materials, everything necessary for us to be able to have the things that we have. And so he created everything and he is always providing us with everything that we need. And so uh, the Bible said, or Jesus teaches us to pray. When he teaches us to pray, he said, tells us to say, our father Lord in heaven. So, so to call God father because he cares for us and he loves us as his children. And so uh, so I just want to encourage you all um, that if you have a relationship with Jesus, you can you can trust that, that he cares for you and loves you uh, as his children, that he, that he meets all of your needs and uh, that he loves you. And uh, even in difficult situations, that he still gives us his comfort and his care. Uh, doesn't mean that life is always easy, right? But God always walks with us through those things as our father and, and comforts us and keeps us through those things. OK, so so uh, take <laughs> I, I, I wish I wish I could have Sayla up here. I'm sure she would have had uh, some some interesting things to contribute to our lesson this morning, but, but that's okay. She's sleeping, so it's better for her to sleep. She didn't get much sleep last night, and neither did we. So, uh, so uh, we are we are concluded this morning. Uh, so we're we're done. If you guys want to kind of head back to the the back of the sanctuary there and exit, thank you guys for being here this morning. In Psalm 18, 2, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. The name of this song is Rock of Ages, When the Day Seems Long. <clears throat>
Turn with me to Exodus chapter 15. It's going to be in verses 1 through 21 this morning. Uh, the heading in my Bible uh, for chapter 15 says, The Song of Moses. I imagine it probably says something like that in yours as well. Um, last week, uh, we were in the famous passage of the parting of the Red Sea. And, uh, and this morning, our passage kind of looks back upon that. We see that, uh, well, the, the very first verse of chapter 15 says this, Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. And so this is indeed a song of Moses, and it's recounting what had just happened with the parting of the Red Sea and uh, giving praise to God. Um, we, we see that uh, Moses had something to sing about uh, and, and likewise, we have something to sing about. That's why we gather together and, and sing like we do on Sunday mornings. I've talked about this before. It's kind of odd, you know. I mean, maybe we're used to it, and so it seems normal to us. But if you kind of take an outsider's perspective to think about people just coming together once a week and singing songs together, that's kind of strange. Uh, that is outside of the context of the church. But, uh, but the reason we as the church do that is because we indeed have something to sing about. Our hearts to be overflowing uh, such that uh, we, we can't help but sing. And so uh, we see that uh, even with Moses uh, here in Exodus chapter 15. In my study uh, this week, I, I learned a new hymn. Uh, that is a new hymn to me. It, it was written in the 1700s by a man named William Hammond. And it's titled, Awake and Sing the Song. I'm just going to read to you the first stanza. Awake and sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. Wake every heart and every tongue to praise the Savior's name. 
Sing on your heavenly way, ye ransomed sinners sing. Sing on, rejoicing every day in Christ, the eternal King. And so, of course, uh, that first phrase, uh, the, the phrase in the first line, the song of Moses and the Lamb, uh, is relevant for our passage this morning, as this is the song of Moses. Uh, but here, here in, in the song that I just quoted, the song of Moses and the Lamb, that phrase actually comes from Revelation 15.3. And so in, in Revelation, we see that uh, uh, those who have conquered the beast, they, they're in heaven, and, and they, they're seeing a song. They're seeing the song of Moses and the Lamb, is uh, what we read there in Exodus. Isn't that interesting? The song of Moses and the Lamb. And so uh, I think it's hearkening back in some way to this song that we see here in Exodus 15. And, and I think we see here that uh, even though we're separated by thousands of years, even though we're under a new covenant, uh, when we sing about the Lamb, we're, we're still singing about some of the very same things that Moses and, and Israel sang about here in Exodus 15. Uh, we do see that there's a correspondence, and, and I hope to draw that out this morning. That as we gather to sing, uh, rejoicing in Christ our eternal King, uh, that, that we can sing about some of these same things that, that come, uh, come to life uh, and come to fruition in even a greater way uh, through Jesus. So let's go ahead and read this song of Moses. If you would stand with me in honor of reading God's word. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 18. And then there's a few more verses um, that, uh, that I'll comment on later in the sermon. Uh, but let's uh, go, go ahead and begin here in verse 1. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown to the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And again, uh, you see in all these caps, uh, is, is Yahweh. Yahweh is his name. Verse 4, Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk into the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the water piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. <coughs> The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. You have led into your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples have heard. They tremble. Pangs have seized the inhabitant, inhabitants of Philistia. Now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed. Trembling seizes the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them. Because of the greatness of your arm, they are still as a stone, till your people, O Lord, pass by, till the people pass by whom you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your great power and might as it is recounted in this song. But then even as we think about the way you have displayed your power in many other ways. But of course, there's more to this song than just that. I pray, Lord, that as we uh, look at this text of Scripture, Lord, that you will uh, give us insight through your word and by your spirit. And, and we pray, Lord, that, um, that we will see ever so clearly that we have a song to sing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
So I've titled this sermon, Our Strength, Our Song, and Our Salvation. And we see these uh, three things there in verse 2, right at the beginning of this song. And I think that as we go through this text of Scripture, through the song of Moses, that we see uh, all these three things kind of teased out in different ways. So, so Moses did the work for me, even though this was written in Hebrew, it, it, it comes, comes out well in English to have the, the three S's. So I didn't even have to do that myself. Uh, we have it right there in verse 2. And, and so we're just going to look at these one by one. And so let's begin with uh, our strength. The Lord is our strength. So let me read verse 2 again, where we see all three. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. So the Lord is my strength. Um, if we move on to verse 3. It says here, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And as I said before, as, as, we, as we look throughout this song of Moses, we see uh, just this recounting of, of what we read in, in the previous chapter. That is the parting of the Red Sea and how uh, the Lord saved Israel but uh, destroyed the Egyptians and bringing the sea back upon them. And so we see that recounted in the song. Um, we see in verse 8, it says, The blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. We skip over to verse 10. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. And then as we read on, we read about uh, you know, the trembling, the terror, the dread that all these different nations are going to have now because they've seen what the Lord has done. And so now they, uh, they have this terror, this dread of the Lord, the people of Israel. And then, of course, it ends there in verse 18. The Lord will reign forever and ever. So first of all, this is just something to marvel at. As, 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 we, as we read, um, yes, in many ways it's just recounting uh, what we read in the previous chapter, but, it, but it's done in a very poetic, in a very powerful way. And so we marvel at, at how the Lord delivered his people from the Egyptians. We marvel at, but also, uh, as, as we look at this, uh, we might say that, that, this, that this text awakens the warrior within us, right? We, we, we see all these mighty deeds that the Lord has done, and just the imagery that, that we see in this, it in a sense awakens the warrior within us. And I'm sure it did for the people of Israel as well, and, and, and they needed that because the people of Israel would, would soon, or uh, as, as they go out into the wilderness and as they later approach the promised land, uh, they're going to fight some, some bloody battles, right? They're, go they're going to need that warrior to be awakened within them. And, and, uh, and of course, uh, what we see most clearly and most importantly in this passage is, is that the Lord is their strength. The Lord is our strength. And so, and so as, as they go into to battle, they can go with confidence, knowing that the Lord is their strength. And indeed, likewise, the Lord is our strength. Um, you know, whenever we face our own trials or temptations or doubts or fears, uh, even when we confront the, the evils and injustices in this world, uh, we, we recognize, uh, we embrace uh, this, this truth that the Lord is our strength. Have you all heard the, the song of Michael W. Smith's song, This Is How I Fight My Battles? Raise your hand if you've heard that. Uh, a, a, good, a good number of you. Um, I confess, I, I've really enjoyed making fun of this song in the past. Uh, because, you know, over and over and over, he says, This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight, I fight my battles. That's the chorus of the song. And so I'm like, Okay, Michael W. Smith, how do you fight your battles? Right? He just repeats over and over, This is how I fight my battles. However, there is actually a hint in the song uh, of how he fights his battles. And so if you know the song, and there, uh, there's, there's a little bridge that says, It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And that may, where, may very well be a uh, reference to Elisha uh, whenever he has this army of angels that are surrounding him. Um, but uh, certainly we see uh, in Michael W. Smith's song, but, but, but especially in Moses' song here, the Lord is my strength. And so uh, we, we recognize as we fight our own battles, right, we might not be going into some kind of war against the Canaanites like the people of Israel later did, uh, but, uh, but we, we have our own battles to fight. 
And, and we need to uh, recognize, we need to rejoice in the fact that the Lord is our strength. That we don't rely upon our own strength, uh, but that we rely upon the Lord. And so when we, when we see how the Lord ha has come through for his people in very tangible ways, we look back uh, in Scripture, uh, here specifically at this, the party of the Red Sea, uh, that, 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 gives us, that gives us a real tangible image of uh, the Lord um, fighting for his people, being in their strength. And indeed, um, not only is the Lord our strength, but the Lord fights for us. And uh, I, I want to remind you of, of uh, a verse that we looked at just last week in Exodus 14. Uh, Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. Okay, so, so here's something for us to think about. Um, there, there, there's no doubt that, that God sometimes calls us to arms, just as he did with the people of Israel, right? He called them to arms, and, and in that, they, they could go forward with confidence because the Lord was their strength. But we also see, uh, in, uh, just in the uh, parting of the Red Sea, that, uh, that in this case, all they had to do was to be silent. That the Lord would fight their battles. And, and so, um, we, uh, we recognize that sometimes uh, God might call us to arms, but, but sometimes there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we should do but trust the Lord. And in everything, whether the Lord is calling us to arms or, or, or whether we uh, are just totally having to sit back and, and let him do his work, whatever the case is, uh, the Lord is indeed fighting for us. Uh, the Lord is our strength, and, um, and we can have confidence no matter what the situation. Okay, so, so in, in, this, uh, in this song of Moses, we see the Lord is my strength. And then next... Uh, he says, uh, the Lord is my song. He is my strength and my song. Um, so, uh, so on one hand, you know, this song of Moses, it, it does, I think, awaken the warrior within us. And yet, it also should awaken the poet within us. Of course, the song itself is, is poetry inspired by the, the wondrous work of the Lord. And we see uh, this poetic imagery throughout the song. Um, just in, in a couple of verses that I've, that I've already read, we see like in verse 8, you know, the blast, at the blast of your nostrils, the water piled up. And then in verse 10, uh, you blew with your wind and the sea covered them. Now, just something interesting on, on that verse in verse 10. Um, this, this is true in Greek and it's also true in Hebrew that the word wind and the word breath is the same word and so you blew with your wind you blew with your breath and the waters covered them, the sea covered them um, so we, we, we see this really uh, powerful poetic imagery it also, it, I think it also uh, shows us the sovereignty of God which is something we talked about a lot last week that, that, that God is the one that's controlling this. The wind is, it is, it is, it is, it is his breath, and, uh, and everything is happening at his command. But the, we, we, see, we see this, just this uh, powerful poetic imagery. And then verse 11, you know, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? Again, we see that Moses had something to sing about and likewise, we have something to sing about. And, and, and even, even in, in thinking that and in talking about how, how we as the church, again, you know, gathering together and out of the overflow of our hearts, singing to the Lord, uh, I think that, uh, uh, that illustrates for us that, um, yes, we might have uh, some warrior in us that, that the Lord brings out, but, but also uh, the Lord should bring out the poet within us. Uh, we we uh, recognize and embrace his beauty. Um, and isn't that incredible? Just think about that for a minute. That the same God who leads us into fearless battle inspires poetry. Right? Some of us might think of think of ourselves more as you know the warrior type, that we're the ones that are gonna you know, go into battle and fight, and then others maybe we're the more you know sensitive uh, type who, who are more poetic and, and, and yeah we might have we might all have our tendencies, but but really um, 
the, the Lord, the gospel, should bring out both of those within us. And I think you see that even here in Exodus 15. I want to read to you some, some lyrics uh, of a song uh, to all the poets I have known. And uh, I don't know, I, I think that uh, a few of the lines in here at least illustrate for us how even, even poetry, or, or when we just think about uh, expressions of, of, of beauty, uh, that, that even these can be used in warring against the darkness of this world. And so, so even though we think of the two maybe in different categories, uh, there, there's some overlap here. Even, even through um, poetic uh, beauty and, and expression, we can fight against the darkness of this world. And I think we see that throughout the psalm. We see it uh, e even in this um, song that Moses sings. But let me read to you the lyrics of, of this song, To All the Poets I Have Known. To all the poets I have known, who saw the beauty in the commonplace, saw incarnation in a baby's face, and in a drop of rain the stars. Where there was mud and blood and tears, you sang a song at night to calm our fears. You made a moment last a thousand years. You are the poets I have known. To all the poets I have known, you built a kingdom out of sea and sand. You conquered armies with a marching band. You carved a galaxy in stone. You built an altar out of bread and spent your soul to see the children fed. You wove your heart in every story read. Thank God for poets I have known. Well, I want to encourage you this morning to, uh, to let the Lord awaken the, the, the poet within you. And that's not to say that we all have to write poetry, right? You don't have to sit down and go write a poem when you, when you go home today. But, but what I mean by that is, is that uh, we all need to behold the beauty of the Lord, behold the beauty of his works, of his creation, and, and, and to be moved by it, right? Again, that's, that's, why, we, that's why we sing, right? We, we, we could just, um, every Sunday morning, we could uh, uh, just recite um, some, some truths about God, and we actually do that whenever we read the Baptist Faith and Message readings, for example. And so that, that's okay, but, but what if that was all that we did? Well, actually, Scripture prescribes us to do more than that. Uh, we are told to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs together. And that's because when you have, when you have the, uh, the uh, poetry, when you have the, the, the rhythm and the rhyme, and you have the, the melody, and it's all put together, there's something powerful about that. It moves the affections. And, uh, and, and we, we ought to be moved, right? We, we shouldn't just be hardened warriors. Now, we shouldn't just be sensitive poets either, right? Again, again there's, there's both of those coming together, and, and the Lord should bring both of those out of us. And so now as we talk about uh, the Lord bringing the poet out of us, I, I, just, I, want, you, I want to encourage you to, um, to uh, not resist that, but rather to, um, to, to embrace it. And to uh, to seek uh, to seek to be moved by God's beauty, uh, His His wondrous works. In other words, let the Lord be your song. Right? Again, that's 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 what Moses says here. He says he says uh, the Lord is my strength and my song. Let the Lord be your song, so that you do have something overflowing within you where you can't help but sing. And and of course. Uh, not only music and poetry, but, but there's, there's all kinds of other um, beautiful ways of expressing who God is and our love and our affection for him, things like that. And so, so uh, let the Lord be your song. And then when, when a world that is lost in deep darkness sees that you have a song to sing, that can be very powerful. Uh, again, just thinking of the fact that we gather together and we sing. Um, you know, the outside world, that seems kind of strange. And, uh, but, but, if, but if they think about that, especially if they witness a congregation singing together passionately to the Lord, or, or again, you know, fill in the blank, uh, wh wh whether it might be poetry or some kind of other artistic expression, when, 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 they, when they see how the Lord brings these things out from us, um, when they see that we have a song to sing, that the Lord is our song, then uh, it can be a very powerful thing. And so, uh, so that, uh, and again, that itself 
uh, has its way of, of working against the darkness of this world. And so, and so we war against uh, the, the evil forces and principalities of this world, uh, and yet one way we might do that is through um, expressions of, of, of God's beauty and, and even of God's his power and his might, right? Because we see that coming together in this song of Moses. Uh, he's, he's expressing uh, through, through poetry and, and very vivid imagery um, some, uh, some, some powerful and uh, um, you know, strong uh, attributes of the Lord. So, so let's go ahead and move on now to the third, our salvation. So chapter 15, verse 2, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Now, at first, it might seem like salvation is, is an afterthought here, right? Uh, and he has become my salvation. So he's my strength, my song, and he's become my salvation. Uh, but a closer look shows that this is far from an afterthought. After all, the, the whole reason that Moses is composing this song and, and, and singing this is because of the Lord's salvation. All right, so if you look back to uh, this, the second part of verse 1, he says, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. And that's actually the very same stanza that Miriam sings at, uh, at, uh, later in, in verse 21, right? Uh, word for word, that's what Miriam sings. And so, and so Moses is saying that the reason he's singing, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. For he has brought this salvation, right? He has brought salvation by um, destroying the uh, Egyptians who had pursued them. And so, uh, so we see that uh, it is because of this salvation that Moses can say, the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my song. And so then the rest of the song, again, pretty much recounts this salvation that the Lord uh, has brought. And, you know, it is good for us to recount our own salvation, for us to sing to the Lord, uh, who is our salvation. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So, so we, um, we, we, we recognize that uh, that's, that's why we sing as well. Right? And we, we, we look back at how he has saved us. I want to point out something in verse 16. Verse 16, it says, um, Terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are still as a stone till your people, O Lord, pass by. Till your people pass by whom you have purchased. Whom you have purchased. Okay. So again, we're, we're looking now at, at how the Lord is our salvation. And, and when we see this word purchased, I think just one simple way to define it is um, that he saved them at a cost, right? He, he saved them, he brought salvation to them, but it came at a cost. And so what was the cost? Well, here, here in, in Exodus, uh, in, in, this, in this story, of this account of the Red Sea, we see that um, the cost was many Egyptians' lives, right? Look at verse 12. It says, you stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. So, so how did God purchase the people of Israel in this case? Well, he purchased them by swallowing up the Egyptians, right? It, it cost many Egyptian lives. And so when the earth swallowed them up, of course, we see that um, not only did the people of Israel have salvation, we see their enemy was defeated, right? Uh, the, the Egyptians were swallowed up. Well, as we think about um, our salvation and, and how we also ought to recount our salvation and how it's because of our salvation that the Lord is our song, um, well, we should recognize uh, that this word purchased, of course, is, is used in the New Testament, uh, that Jesus purchased us for our salvation. And so, uh, so that's kind of one of those things as, you, as you're reading through, as you kind of ring a bell, oh, that word purchased, well, that, that's used in the New Testament as well. We see it's, it's uh, it kind of takes a a different uh, there's a different spin on it um, because we, we see that Jesus purchased us not with the lives of others 
but with his own life, with his own blood, right? Jesus purchased us by his own blood. Indeed, he himself was swallowed up. So here in Exodus, we see he, that, that the Lord purchased the Israelites with the Egyptians' blood, that the Egyptians were swallowed up. But in the New Testament, we see that Jesus purchased us with his own blood, that Jesus himself was swallowed up. That is, he died a bloody death. He was buried in a tomb, swallowed up in the earth. And this, this was a real and necessary um, part of our redemption. It was, it was necessary for our redemption. And yet so was the resurrection on the third day. And because Jesus not only died, but was raised, well, in the end, our greatest enemy is defeated. Our greatest enemy is swallowed up, just like the Egyptians were swallowed up. So praise God, Jesus was not swallowed up in the grave forever, was he? Uh, he, he, he purchased us by his blood. He was swallowed up. But then three days later, he rose again. And in rising from the dead, he defeated our greatest enemy, not the Egyptians. But what does Paul say in 1 Corinthians 15? He says, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? And so we can join Paul in that uh, declaration that death is swallowed up in victory. Because Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. One day he will come again and the dead will rise. And in the meantime, he has given us his spirit. Indeed, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that same spirit lives within us. And so we sing, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. We're going to take the Lord's Supper together this morning. And if our uh, deacons who are serving could go ahead and, and make their way forward. Um, of course, when we take the Lord's Supper, we're celebrating the fact that Jesus indeed purchased us by his own blood. And uh, uh, there's, uh, there's, um, there's great significance uh, to, to the supper as we celebrate that. Um, as, as the deacons come forward, uh, go ahead and come forward, men, and you can begin to prepare the table for us. And this is a time for us to prepare our hearts. Um, the Lord's Supper is, is one of two ordinances in the church, uh, baptism, the Lord's Supper, and that is the proper order. Um, but, but even for those who have uh, been baptized and the, those who are baptized believers, it's important that as we take the Lord's Supper that we uh, examine our hearts. That we, uh, as, as Paul says to the, to the Corinthians, that we don't take it in, in an unworthy manner. And so, uh, so we're going to have the opportunity as, as the uh, Lord's Supper is being passed and as we sing, uh, this is a time for you to focus your heart upon Jesus uh, and what he has done for us. And it's also a time for us to confess sin and for us to uh, confess our need for the sacrifice that is represented to us uh, in the Lord's Supper. And so um, I'm going to... Uh, Pass these elements uh, to the deacons to be served to you, and um, before they uh, pass these plates, we'll, we'll say a prayer, and then we'll sing together. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we, uh, we thank you for the blood that you shed for us. We thank you also that uh, Jesus did rise from the dead uh, and that because of that, uh, our great enemy death has been defeated. Uh, so we celebrate that uh, this morning to take the Lord's Supper. We pray, Lord, that, um, that uh, you would minister to us through this, through this very tangible uh, representation of your sacrifice. We pray this in Jesus' name. Behold, the Lamb who bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness and Spread. 
For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Would you rise as we sing the last verse together? And so with thankfulness and faith we rise to respond and to remember our call to follow in the steps of Christ as his body here on earth. As we share Before I 
dismiss you with uh, a benediction. Uh, Alex and Ray, come on up here. I, I didn't even give them a heads up on this, but, but we need we need to do this. Uh, uh, we we voted Alex in as our pastor of worship and family ministries, so we might say that by default he's a member of the church. But so we should we should go ahead and uh, make that vote official for both Alex and Ray. And so uh, so. All who are in favor of receiving Alex as a member of First Baptist Church, will you raise your right hand? All opposed, same sign. Very good. And then all who are in favor to receive Rhea as a member of First Baptist Church, would you raise your right hand? All opposed, same sign. Very good. So now, now we've, we've made it official. Um, but uh, again, you know, we're, we're super glad to have them here and serving. Uh, let me go ahead and, and dismiss us with a uh, benediction from... Uh, Romans chapter 15. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.